Assalamu alaikum. I am Asad Yusuf. Today's topic is Linux target activation. So uh, these are the processes uh, occur in the gantry head uh, outside the gantry in air. So the electron captured by the nucleus and uh, could emit neutron or the gamma rays that the photons greater than 10 MeV can interact with the nucleus and can produce neutrons. So these are called neutron loss processes. On the other hand, when the neutron interact with the nucleus, it could produce the photon. So it's called neutron capture process. Activation of air in the beam. Air is composed of mainly of oxygen or nitrogen. So the oxygen will be activated are in radioactive and its half life is two minutes and it could produce 511 kilo, kilo electron volt. On the other hand, nitrogen also become radioactive if you interact with the photons and uh, it could produce nitrogen 13 and uh, its half life is 10 minutes. So these are the references um, and uh, the, they are estimate the matter to calculate the dose or the activity of those activated um, nitrogen or oxygen. So these are the activities. So 0.158 microcurie per second, or oxygen has 0.435 microcurie. So it's very small. Okay. See. For 20 seconds, 100 mules of the beam produced, beam could produce 3.2 microcurie. Uh, of nitrogen reductive material of oxygen is 8.7 microcurie and its activity is very quite small. Activation of air in the beam. Total activity in a treatment room are build up. The short half life of oxygen and nitrogen and room ventilation typically is about five to 10 air changes per hour that limit the buildup of the activity within the room. For a therapist entering the room immediately after each treatment field for five minutes, the estimated skin dose is around 0.15 to 0.2 microsieve. Whole body dose would be around 2.5% of the skin dose. Assuming 80 treatment fuel per day, these equate to annual doses of skin is 3 to 4 millisievert per year, or full body is 75 to 100 microsievert per year. These values are very low comparison with the CNSC occupational dose limits. That is, skin is 500 millisievert per year and the whole body is 20 millisievert per year. And again, remember, these values are valid only when uh, you're treating patients with high energy. So the 80 treatments with high energy, and that's not practically possible. Activation of the target. So you know, now we are talking about the components at the tar target level. So electron. Uh, could produce neutron that we have talked about and the camera could produce neutron as well. So this is the target on 197 converted to 196 and uh, 355 kilo electron volt at 6.2 days in half-life. And this is the important when the biomedical engineer working at the target level, then they could get this uh, uh, energy from the target. So target is made of gold plated tantalum, a very high power electron beam is directly incident upon the target, producing extremely, extremely intense from stalling X-ray field. So both the uh, uh, neutron loss and neutron capture are both possible. So stable tantalum is converted to metastable state as having half-life of 8.1 hour. First spectrum obtained after five days, 15 half life after last use of accelerator number. So, uh, what is it? Is. Um, gold decay via electron capture and major proton emissions around 65 to 76 kilo electron volts, which is around 76%, and this energy is around 110%. So estimated activity of uh, gold target immediately following the final treatment is 1.2 millicurie. Estimated dose rate from the target immediately following the treatment is around 4.5 microsievert per hour, uh, the rate of five centimeter. Major dose rate five days off target removal, around 2 to 2.5 microsievert per hour at 100 cm and 0.8 millisievert per hour at 
five C. Now uh, we're going to talk about activation of flattening filter. So uh, flattening filter it is made as of nickel, and uh, so its half life is around thirty six R. So and possibly produce beta positive one twenty seven to one three two eight kilo electron volt gamma plus five eleven K electron volt of inhalation gamma. So the decay procedure, uh, again, again, another thing is nickel to cobalt 57 is also the radioactive, and uh, another possibility is cobalt 59 to cobalt 58, and uh, these are the respective energies. So the platinum filter is made of uh, stainless steel principal components or ferrous, nickel, or chromium. They also contain traces of molybdenum, cobalt, or TA, and many others. Only the gamma beams directly incident upon the target. So there is no electron, we are talking about the photons. So this is the, the electron, neutron uh, process is dominant process. So stable Fe56 converted into 55 Fe, so T half is 2.7 years. Um, and this is the energy which is quite negligible dose rate, having a very negligible dose rate. Uh, stable chromium has a T half life of 28 days, or radioactive chromium, sorry, um, and having a disk energy is around 10%. Now, uh, again, uh, much more detail about these activities, and uh, can um, take a look. But the conclusion is a negligible external radiation dose rate and uh, estimated cobalt is 1.5 kilo electron kilo electron. Additional observation of reactivation measurement around a 23 MeV accelerator gantry head over the course of normal treatment days shows maximum dose rate typically six microsievert per hour. Uh, maximum at the face of the columnator with jaw wide open, probably from the activation target, flattening filter and primary definite across external surface of entry up to 2.5 microsievert per hour. In all cases, dominant acetone was radial, really incredible as cobalt 60 per use via non capture. Greatest activity was in the motor magnitude to the composition. Uh, many contain uh, this very little radiological hazard. However, did pose a problem with respect to this one. sufficiently active that could definitely not be sold for scrap or disposed for via normal landfill. And uh, this is a precaution. So the conclusion: the amount of activation increases rapidly with the energy and proximity to the electron beam target. The dose rate measured from 15 MB target was one twentieth of for. 23 megavolt target. Multiple activation process may occur. Not all activation products are short lived. Isotopes of cobalt appear to be the most prominent longer life species. Activation products generally present minimal radiological hazard under the normal operating condition. Proper ventilation is necessary to reduce the buildup of radioactive gas. Care should be taken as handling of the target is required during the servicing as the amount of radioactive material present may be significant. That is one millicurie. So don't be afraid of the neck. Uh, uh, you just know how to handle the problems. So these are the references of this presentation. Thank you very much for listening. See you soon.